the art of comics, Bill Sienkiewicz. Hey guys, welcome to the Art of Comics, episode three, Bill Sienkiewicz, The New Mutants. And I am so very, very excited to talk to you guys today about Bill Sienkiewicz. He is one of my favorite artists. And um, I wanted to start with The New Mutants because I felt like this was, um, while not his first major comic book work, um, this is after Moon Knight. This, to me, um, really is when he is just firing on all cylinders and he is doing his thing. And so I'm excited to share with you guys Bill Sienkiewicz. We're definitely going to be talking more about him in this channel because uh, the art of comics is about creating comics, the artistic side, the business side, everything. And he is one of my favorite uh, artists. He's just, he's the guy. So he's, um, Bill Sienkiewicz is from Pennsylvania. Uh, he went to art school in New Jersey. Um, and got a job at Marvel, uh, working for Jim Shooter during, um, in the early 80s. He was 19, guys. He was 19 years old when he, uh, first started doing comics. And, uh, here he's probably early 20s, you know, 21, 22, something like that, doing New Mutants. And this stuff is amazing. This stuff is amazing. And you can tell, as we go through it, you can tell some of his influences, uh, definitely, you know, I see some Topi in here, Sergio Topi from uh, Italy, and I see, you know, a lot of different stuff. Uh, definitely European. He's drawing a lot of fine art, a lot of from fine art world, stuff like that, you know, he, um, maybe advertising illustration. Great stuff. Okay, let's talk about the New Mutants. Uh, Chris Claremont. Now, I didn't get these books. In the beginning, when they first came out in the 80s, I was a little young for that. Uh, I got them later on in my early 20s when I fell in love with Bill Sienkiewicz when he was doing um, uh, Electra Assassin. So Electra Assassin came out, and I was just mesmerized and, and blown away by the painting, by the artwork. And so I went and hunted him down. This is a handmade collection that I made. So I got all of his New Mutants run. And I collected it in this hardcover. And so I made this. And if comment, give me a comment, you guys. Let me know if you want me to do a an episode just on book binding and comic binding. I can do that. Um, I've done it for many years. I had it professionally done. And then I decided to just go out and start doing it myself. And so this is one of my first ones I did. And actually turned out pretty darn well. I'm kind of happy with the way it turned out. A little bubbling on the cover. But anyway... Um, I like it. So these are the originals. Yeah, I ruined them. But you know what? This is about comics and reading them. I don't care about reselling my comics. I care about the stories and reading them. So I wanted them in this trade. And at the time, there was no trade. Now, you can get these. You can buy these on trade. Uh, you could also get, if you've got the, the moolah for it, get the wonderful uh, IDW artist edition. I really want that. Unfortunately, it is mucho dinero and hard to find and very expensive. Therefore, I have not gotten. But I'd love to see the original sized artwork and really dive into what he's doing, his techniques and stuff. So that's on my big wish list. Um, so we're going to start here. New Mutants, number 18. This starts the Demon Bear kind of storyline. And this is a couple issues. And then it goes into Badlands and some other kind of arcs. This is really... A very popular seminal work of his and Chris Claremont's really diving into this character Danny's kind of background as a Native American and kind of that shamanistic um, demons and and things like that so just, I mean first page let's just start here and we can spend a whole episode just on this page look here what we got going on we've got this great kind of dual imagery flattened checkered blanket with a textured bear under there she's there i mean you've got a lot of different artistic choices here that he's making 
um, combining different imagery, using the quilt as a pattern. Um, yeah, really just great. When you, when you see this, you're like, whoa, this is not normal comics. This is something else, you know? Look at here, just, we're just on the first couple pages, guys. Look at this here. Um, he's one of the first comic artists that I recall doing this kind of the splatter with a, you know, with ink and a toothbrush or something. There, I'm sure there were others before him, but uh, love his work. You know, you can tell, you can go in here and really look that he's using all kinds of tools. He's not like some of these uh, artists that just use, you know, a brush or just use microns or rapidographs. He's using everything. You can see crow quill. You can see, you can see micron, you know, rapidograph back then it would be. You can see, you know, brush work, dry brush techniques. He's using everything. Look how dynamic this is. Look at the angles. Just really great dynamic compositions. You know, over here, tilting of the frames, going through. Just really, really, really well done. This guy is top of his look. I should read these these really great letters. It's really fun to see some of these. Old, that's another reason why I wanted to bind them. I want to keep the ads. Okay, look at this. I love this here. Great. And he signed, you can see his signature right here. You know, using this graphics of, you know, the, the repeating motif of the circles, you know, showing this movement. Look at this, look at this action here. Look at all this kind of texture. Uh, really great stuff. He um, is just a master at that heavy detailed next to some kind of blankness. So there's this, there's this space between kind of a rendered detailed section of the knees and then there's this kind of just blank, you know, he doesn't overdo it. He, he allows that variation which causes interest, right? So, I mean, this guy is a master. This is a great page just to see the angles. I mean, look at what we've got here, the interesting angles of this robot. We've got him cannibal coming through. So this really tells us how to read this, right? He's reading here, we're reading here, and then now what? We follow cannonball. He says something. Now we go right here. Boom, now he's saying, now we got the foreground. Look at all this detail shooting across like this. I mean, just brilliant, follows the eye, teaches you how to read it. The art moving across like that, just Brilliant, brilliant work. You can just study this for forever. Um, love his stuff. I love the detail. I like the coloring too. The paper, you know, the, one of the issues of getting a book like the, you know, Binding Originals um, is the paper is this kind of crappy newsprint stuff. But um, there is something I like about it. We do lose some of the line quality. So there's some line quality. Um, that we probably lose on the nice paper you would see. And of course, in the big, the big, um, you know, artist edition, we'd see it that well. So we do lose a little bit of that, but I like it still. And um, it kind of just brings back some nostalgia, perhaps. And I like the coloring. I like the flat colors more than the more um, computerized, you know, fancy lens flares stuff. I don't really care for that so much nowadays. Um, look at this great texture here again putting a lot of a lot of stuff I mean you would see this guy you got to understand this is 84 and 85 this is way before a lot of this was happening this is this is cutting edge stuff and all the artists go to this guy I mean Bill is considered he's just one of the best just period you know you look at Jay Lee his especially his early stuff heavily influenced by this. I mean, we could just go through the list. We won't even go there, but yeah. Um, everyone knows Sienkiewicz because he's he's the guy. Look at this. I love I love Liliana here. He he puts just, you know, he, he's using, it, it looks very gestural too. I don't know if he penciled it. I bet he did not pencil. I mean, I'm sure he penciled it, but I bet it was loose. Uh, I, I doubt he did tight pencils because this looks so quick, energetic, frenetic gestural i bet he's just like slapping down the, and look at this great sense of um space and shape he's not putting you know hair strands all across just the front 
and then we, we know what's going on. We know what that is. I mean, that's just brilliant. That is just stuff simple like that. I love that kind of the, 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 the decisions. Uh, great composition here. Love the shadowing. You know, he's using that little repeatograph just to put a little bit of kind of um, detail and dimension to it. But it's still very expressive. Almost kind of simple. And then he's breaking down really symbolically, you know, changing the borders, panel borders to give it this uh, kind of uh, feral look to it. Um, you know, the symbols of the eyes, just really great. Look at that. I mean, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful shot right there. You gotta love that. And now the bear's not even anatomically correct. It's not a, he's not going to the zoo for research of what a bear looks like. This is this monstrosity creation of, of nightmares and horrors, right? Uh, and so the proportions are all off, but it, you know it's a bear. It, it's got that great, uh, again, I'm going to use expressionist quality. Uh, I mean, you could tell this guy is a fine artist. He's not just, a, you know, a pencil or an inker or whatever. He's the real deal. You know, love this stuff. And really great. I mean, um, I can't wait to show the other stuff. He is... And what, what I really love about him, look at this cover, he is one of the few artists that is brilliant at, you know, pencil and inks, doing final inks and, and rendering, but also covers and painting. You know, some of this reminds me a little bit of Chaikin's um, um, Cody Starbuck, which I think was an epic uh, magazine before this. I, I want to say that was in the late 70s. I'd have to look it up. But it reminds me a little bit of Chaikin's uh, kind of painting, um, the way he kind of painted things. And I just really dig it a lot. Uh, the coloring, again, is really good. I think the coloring is, is top-notch and should definitely be um, mentioned. Great angles. You know, he does this, you know, He's using a lot of like geometric kind of hard angles too for hair, for for face, for body. Uh, it's not always this kind of flowing organic line that you would see maybe with a brush or something. He's using a lot of hard angles. And maybe that's also because of some of the tools he's using. Look at that hair. This is a great example of how he, you know, is just putting kind of the edges of the hair line uh, and putting some kind of detail around her face but then all that's just blank all that is just it's not needed you know there's a simplicity in there um, that is is really important for comics and illustrating again that's great too not even finishing the the um, the hair just kind of keeping that open we know what that is look at this just great lines again really energetic really kind of almost manic just great stuff shadows he is um this is just great stuff you can get this again like i said you can get this all over the place and it is uh worth it the story's great you know chris claremont uh i was reading x-men back then you know uh, like everybody else in the world um t titans things like that this fell off. This was not on my radar as a kid, and it probably would be too mature for me. I just wouldn't really understand it. The art was, is just, art was beyond me as a kid, and and the story and stuff. But now looking at it, I can see that uh, <clears throat> he's doing something special here. This is great too, you know. And he's and he's starting to. We can start seeing that he's really getting into um, doing some of the sound effects on on the art and stuff as well. So we're going to go here. Badlands. This is a great, another great kind of storyline um, <clears throat> that followed the demon bear. Going to very simple. You know, look how rendered, look how much detail we have on Ileana here. And then we move over here to um, <clears throat> Sun, uh, Sunfire? Sunspot? Sunspot? Remind me what that is. I think Sunspot. Uh, and look at that kind of almost really cartoony um stuff yeah again just really look at that detail you know look at all this kind of the grime the angles it's a great angle there too this is a great shot this is a great shot because we get this um this really big open space we see the grasslands 
we then see far away, you know, he's doing this really great job of these levels of distance, these clouds over here, and then over here we see this great positioning, and uh, we can see the the size um, differential between our little characters and this massive magic demon bear. Uh, and then here he's really kind of going crazy because now he's he's just going ahead and he's going to just draw out, hand write out the the credits. All this kind of stuff, you know, and really give it this homegrown feel. Really, is turns out cool. And then the nurse and the cop turn into these kind of, um, you know, Native American demon type guys, little minions that they're going to battle. And um, just great angles, man. Just great, great movement. This is a great, great story. And I can't believe this is 1984. 1984. This was before Watchmen. This is before Night, uh, Dark Knight. This is like right there, you know, right before all that stuff. Look at this. This doesn't happen in comics back then. You didn't see this much. You didn't see these big, huge panels that, that um, this big like double splash page for just like a panoramic, you know, environment shot. You wouldn't see this. That just doesn't happen. Look how dark and these purples and magentas. I love this too. I love her face and I love her hair. How it's just a kind of a simple. Yeah, great stuff. Here he's using, um, you know, I don't know how he did it. If he used a, a ruler and just like banged that out, I'm assuming he did it. it I'm assuming he used some kind of a zipatone um, gimmick. That's what I would say. Great stuff. I mean, he is one of the. I can't wait to talk about the other stuff too. And look at these paintings again. Just a talk about a guy who is just versatile in every way. I've met him at, I have one of his, um, I got a commission from him about 15 years ago. It's of Electra. It was less than 200 bucks. He did it in a day. I met him at Comic-Con and it was wonderful. I should have got like five of them because now I don't even know if he does that anymore. Um, I'll have to, on another episode, show it to you. I'm looking at it right now, but it's kind of hard to record. Um, I'll definitely show you guys that and uh he's just a really great guy really nice friendly you know i didn't catch him in a bad time uh he i saw him again got some things signed last year at uh, san diego and now they've changed his booth you know he's got a booth a little bit like alex ross maybe not quite as big but it's definitely got this fine art kind of vibe to it so they're really kind of pushing this brand as you know here's these painted framed art pieces that are you know tens of thousands of dollars and that's what th that's what we're talking about here we're talking about a guy who does comics but could be definitely considered in the fine art world so they're kind of bumping up that brand and i think it's definitely warranted um i really want to talk about stray toasters things like that we'll do that don't worry again great stuff here um yeah look at um Look at all this stuff. And this is, I'm assuming, if we had the artist edition, we'd see this is white out. A lot of this is. I would assume he's just going with, like, the pro white or white out or, or acrylic paint, you know, and putting that in there. Really neat stuff. Just brilliant, brilliant artwork that he was involved in. And he is just... Um, great lines here, you know. Now look at that. Oh, wow. That's great. That is really great. Gotta love that. Look at this. And just, just this energy, you know? And he's putting, you know, he's putting all these little lines in there, you know, with his, with his, uh, repudiograph. And then he gets a brush and he makes it hard and he's slapping on blacks and he's, you know, it's just really great compositions. There's magic. Yeah. Love these ads. <laughs> This is great. Here's another example. See, I'm going to move this up a little bit. See, here's this example, you know, of him painting and kind of really making this hard, angular, geometric kind of lines for parts of the body to kind of almost a blocky, you know, and then he softens it with these airbrush techniques and these kind of warm colors and uh, really works well. It's just, um, there's an artist this reminds me of I'd have to go back and think not Al Parker but one of those illustrators I'd have maybe Al Parker I have to go back comment below if you can think of some some illustrators that kind of remind you of 
of him. Um, wouldn't it be maybe is it no not Robert McGinnis maybe Al Parker. I'll have to look it up. Uh, I'm a big big fan of those those illustrators. So oh, there's Kurt Wagner. You gotta love uh, gotta love Nightcrawler in here. Yeah, and I love these lines. I love these lines. How it just kind of like shows this movement. You know, he was kind of doing that kind of the speed force. Was great stuff. He's still working today. He's banging stuff out. I think he does more. This is great. There's more covers. Let's see how flat. How this flattened it, but it looks great. You know, he didn't curve this out. It's a flattened headband. Very blocky. You know, just the shape of the hair in a very geometric kind of shape. But we we see it. It just makes it kind of this um, stylized version of of her and. And while it flattens, it just kind of gives it kind of a cool artistic kind of flavor. You know, the hair just sketches it in, you know, with the big black blob, you know. There we go. Here's a cloak and dagger in there again. Yeah, this probably didn't, I bet this wouldn't even take too long for him to do a cover like this. This doesn't look like it's too, too much for him. They could bang it out. I do love back then the art. This part of it is the coloring, but I just love this, the black leather, kind of patent leather, and, you know, making those folds and those creases in the fabric to show that it's kind of a tight on skin, you know? I just really like the way that looks, and he puts a lot of nice texture. You know, he leaves them open, but he puts a lot of, like, nice nice texture in here. And look in there, too, all those little different different techniques and stuff. That's a great, that's a great shot. He is just one of the best well um a couple other things to show you this is just a great i'll just go through the covers here wonderful stuff look at that one that's great love his airbrush he's putting a lot of airbrush and just a lot of different techniques in here this is great this is what i want to show you we're going to go over time screw it I love this. Now we're getting into kind of full-on mixed media, you know, and I don't remember, you know, Dave Keown, is it Dave Keown? No, sorry, Dave McKean, uh, Sandman did, of course, he's infamous for those kind of mixed media covers, photography things, but this is the first one that I remember, kind of a superhero comic, you know, he's using staples, you know, of this one pencil drawing broken up in this acrylic painting and this is really cool art. This is really cool illustration that he's using that um, that just looks so neat. I mean, this is almost like a Bernie Fuse, you know, type of type of painting in there. And look, notice the notice the page, the color, um, the paper quality is different. This is this is kind of a the crappy newsprint. This feels like it's a little less crappier newsprint, and the coloring comes out a little bit better. The blacks are totally ganked up, though. I don't know what's up with the blacks. The blacks look very grayish. So the blacks got jacked up, but the, the lines look good. Wow, look at that. You know? Kudos to um, the, the, the letter as well, Tom. Tom Orkinski, something like that. Um, look at that. That's great, too. Almost reminiscent of the Joker. Oh, look at that. Wonderful. Getting Legion up into this. Into this biscuit. Yeah. That's a good cover, too. Look at that, that intro page. Yeah. Th I mean, this stuff is just out of control. And it is artistic. It's expressive. It's, it's you know, look at this. Look at that. What the heck is this, you know? Like, what is going on? I mean... Just you know, and he, now he's starting to he now he's playing with with Zipatone, right? So now he's putting this kind of texture on there. So he's really experimenting with that's great right there, little, that figure. He's really experimenting with everything. And look at yeah, yeah, what is going on here? He's just gonna say, you know what? Whatever can make a mark and whatever type of thing I can do, I'm gonna put it in. I mean, this is great. Um, yeah, it's surprising. I, I, I'm almost surprised at times that like 
editorial were cool with this because while it's so great, it's so different back then. Um, I'll look at this wonderful little hand. Um, oh man, look at that. Just this little spot there, you know, just the composition, the writing. It's all just the, the lettering, the positioning of all that. It's great. Yeah, we are, uh, this is amazing stuff. So great. This, I'm telling you, this is some of the best stuff. And it's classic Chris Claremont. Yes, it's verbose. Yeah, there's a lot of thought bubbles. But, you know, deal with it. I like, I like it. You know, there's a lot to read. It means that your comic's going to take more than uh, 15 minutes to read. So that's a good thing. You know, you get really inside their heads and really get inside their 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 characters. And you get to know them. I mean, look at that. That is so crazy. So not anatomical. I mean, it looks like the leader, right? And it's just like, hey, man, that's how we're going to we're gonna draw a cannibal like that today. That, oh, that's great. The big old huge forearms. Yeah. Just some of, and he was like in his early 20s. My favorite, uh, brilliant cover. So much going on here. So much fun. I love this. Um, there we go. This is uh, the art of comics, guys. I am Andre Salazar. You know, comment below. What you? What is your favorite uh, Bill Sienkiewicz stuff? Um, subscribe. Click the little bell icon so you can like be notified when the next one is. And uh, keep rocking on. Make your comics. Read some stuff and uh, share this, man. Because I love Bill Sienkiewicz. We're going to be talking more about comics. We got some more episodes coming up pretty soon. And uh, thanks a lot. Later.